Hi there, friend humans. Lucas Levy Keppel here. And I am so excited to be heading out to the Katy Trail in Missouri. Next week, I'll be riding for five days and about 250 miles along the longest rail trail in the country. Before I get out there, though, I need to talk about the gear that I'm going to take with me. So this video is about what I packed for the Katy Trail 2021. Whenever I watch these videos on other people's channels, I'm always intrigued by what sort of items they take with them, what is considered so important, and what uh, people leave behind. So let's take a moment and dive in to all of the gear that's going to be taken on this trail and how I've packed it on the bike. First of all, let's talk about the items of clothing I'm going to be wearing. Now this is my warm day attire. I'm not entirely sure that uh, the days are going to be warm the whole trip, but this is what I'm expecting for most of it. So I've got a lightweight uh, shirt here. This is from uh, Mountain Hardware. And uh, it's very lightweight, very wicking, and uh, I've worn it on many a bike trip and enjoyed it greatly. Uh, I've got darn tough socks here. I enjoy that these have a uh, exploding outhouse on them uh, as it rockets up to the sky. Uh, a little bit of humor on the trip. Um, of course, I've got my riding gloves. These were just a cheap pickup from Target. Uh, here are the cool um, KUHL. Uh, pants, and these are the Radical pants, I believe, R-A-D-I-K-L. Um, fascinating set of pants, but they are so able to be worn uh, easily. There's zipper pockets, all sorts of different um, places to store things. And one of the things that I found really handy lately uh, is this, what used to be for pocket watches. Now, I don't use a pocket watch, and especially not while I'm bikepacking, but the uh, audio recorder that I use on the trail fits perfectly in that little pocket watch pocket. So it makes it a, a nice place to keep the audio recorder easily at hand, able to be turned on or off as I need it. Lastly, over here, these are my chamois uh, by Zoic. Uh, they have a little um, piece of padding inside to uh, make sure that the trip is comfortable or at least as comfortable as possible. And that's what's gonna be on my body uh, as well as a pair of shoes, of course. I didn't bring the shoes out here. Um, then I have the helmet for my head, of course. And the helmet has a Nightcore uh, lamp on it that has both red and... Uh, oh, I don't need the SOS going. And several levels of brightness of the white light as well. There we go. Always forget how to turn that off. Then I'll be um, riding with this backpack on as well. And this backpack here uh, contains at the back um, a water bladder from Osprey. Uh, and you can see that runs over to here and we'll be able to be taking sips along the way. When I was out in Colorado, one of the things the uh, guides told me on that trail was that if you take sips along the way, it's better for you than um, trying to take big gulps at certain places. So I've been trying to use the water bladder to live up to that. Now, the next pocket forward. Eee. This has my electronics kit with a charger um, and uh, several different cables, including for my smartwatch here. Uh, and in here as well is a towel. Let's wipe down my head if I need it. And lots and lots of snacks. I've got cliff bars and uh, complete cookies and all of that in this pack. The uh, hope is that as we go on, I'll be tempted to eat them <laughs> to get the weight off of my back, which is, you know, good. It'll help reduce the weight, uh, and I will feel it being reduced. Next forward is the uh, all-important uh, toilet paper roll and a uh, little baggie with some medicine in it, just in case I uh, get sick on the trail. I've got a little bit of sunscreen in here, all that on my back. Uh, nothing too heavy, but always important to have the... Uh, latrine kit with you just in case. And then clipped to the outside here is uh, the GoPro um, clip. Normally I will have this strapped to the front of the, uh, the backpack here um, so that I can record from my chest level uh, or use it to record from the bike. It's a pretty easy um, technique to do the recording on that trip. Okay, now we're going to start at the front of the bike and work to the rear. Uh, on the very front here, I have 
a 360 camera. I haven't used this before on a bikepacking trip, or really at all. I'm looking forward to seeing how it goes. It's a Samsung Gear 360. Uh, they are very inexpensive right now, which is why I was able to pick one up. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to experimenting with that and seeing how 360 video can add to these video productions. Then in here, I've got a spare GoPro battery uh, for the camera that is being used right now spare uh, room for another battery if I need it. I've got, this isn't it, but this is the lens that I'll be taking with me on the uh, Sony camera. I've got a Nex5 that it's attached to right now. I'll be taking the Alpha 6000 um, for the trip, but that's in use at the church at the moment, and so I don't have it in here. But wanted to get something approximating the weight, so I put it in here. In the front of this pack, uh -huh, I have uh, go, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Sony batteries and a little lens cleaner cloth somewhere in there. Um, I've got a couple different lens cleaner cloths in different places, so if I can't reach that one, there are others. And this whole bag has a pop-out uh, rain protector. The rain protector will be very useful if we get into a situation where, hey, it's raining. And it is Missouri, so you never know. And that just slides back into the back here. Ah. Okay, slides back into its pouch. There we go. Good. Now I've got that attached um, with, I'm not sure if you can see it here, but I've got it attached with a little Velcro uh, strap to the front. So this will all hang on to the front with this Velcro strap uh, and it's fairly secure. Now underneath that, I've got a handlebar roll and in there is my um, puffy jacket and the quilt. Ooh, okay. Now this puffy jacket I'm planning to use pretty much only at camp, so it stays in the dry bag here on the front. Uh, and then underneath that uh, is this brand new to me hammock quilt. This is from Hammock Gear. Uh, burrow, um, it's the, the burrow quilt. I'm so excited to be using it uh, on this trip. As you can see, it's already starting to puff up just from having it out of the container. Now, uh, in the foot box of the quilt, I will have my um, sleeping wear to keep it absolutely dry. Inside the dry bag, inside the quilt should be perfectly safe. Uh, I don't have it in there right now, so I'm going to add it in real quick. Okay, I've got the uh, foot box now stuffed with the sleep stuff, which is a pair of socks uh, and uh, some uh, base layer tights and a uh, shirt that are all made out of merino. They should keep me nice and warm uh, through the night. Let's get this stuff back away, shall we? Whew. After much finagling, I was able to get all of the... Whew all of the down stuff back into the dry bag, which is now rolled back up, clipped, and ready to go back on the bike when it becomes time for it. Leave that there for now. Okay, let's go back to the cockpit a little further. <sighs> I have here the um, water bottle. This doesn't have anything in it right now, but it will eventually have uh, water in it, and it's a good size for mixing in a little energy container so I can have some uh, caffeine in the morning. I'm not bringing a... Uh, not bringing coffee along with me on this trip, so that'll help me stay awake. Uh, then I've got my phone holder here, and uh, this is a huge unit that, as you can tell, spins around but locks in place lets me pop the phone in and out easily and bonus it holds a battery down here now i've had to strap the battery on uh, with a little velcro strap because it kept falling out at that angle the velcro strap keeps it in nicely and you know i can just charge the phone as i'm riding along which makes that very handy Okay, let's keep moving back along the bike. The frame pack uh, just this morning had the little um, dongle at the end here fall off. So 
I'm going to have to be finding a way to replace that or something else. I have in there some snacks, gummy bears, and complete cookies for the journey. Underneath that is my lube in a plastic bag. This is a chain lube to make sure that the, the chain remains well uh, oiled along the way. Most of the rest of this is um, repair parts. So I've got my chain cleaner. I have uh, a little bit of water, uh, a spare water bladder in case I'm going a long distance without it. I'm, not, I'm hoping not to need that, but I've got it just in case. We've got my bike pump. Uh, and this rotates out and gives me the uh, pressure of the tires, which will be very handy along the way. Um, and fits nicely in the frame pack there. I've got, let's see if I can bring you over. In here, I have my tire levers, my patch kit, uh, multi-tool, a uh, few other pieces that are just in this mesh pouch, which works very well for that. Okay, that's the big uh, side of the pouch. Let me put the gummy bears and snacks back in. Now, next up is this little selfie stick. This is the one I'm taking on the trip. It's made out of metal, has a tiny little tripod to go with it, should hold the GoPro and the 360 camera pretty nicely. All right, that's all on this side of the bike. Okay, frame bag has more to be discovered over on this side. This side has my water kit in it, has my Sawyer squeeze that I'll need to take into the hammock with me at night. Uh, also has my toothbrush and toothpaste um, and some water uh, things to clean out and to attach the um, the water bags together, the hydration bladders together. All of that sits nicely in here so that I don't forget to take it with me at the end of the day. You have to take those Sawyer squeezes uh, into the hammock if there's ever a possibility of the water, uh, of the air temperature getting down below freezing. Okay, um, this right now doesn't have anything in it. It will hold my keys during the trip. Oh, it looks like it's got an adapter in there, but that's fine. Then I've got the, the grail, not the holy grail, just a grail filter. And this is, uh, as you can see, stickered up with some different things. This allows me to filter water. I'm probably not gonna need it on the trip, but between the Sawyer and the grail, I uh, just wanted to be prepared just in case. Plus it gives me a chance to feel what the weight of this will be going forward. All right, can you believe we're almost to the, the end of the pack? Well, sort of. Most everything it re resides in these panniers, um, which are part of this Topeak uh, set. The Topeak rack and the uh, commuter bag here have been very helpful in making sure that everything gets packed. On this side, I just have the underquilt. Um, this is the if you're not familiar with a hammock setup, I'll show you a video of it later, but the underquilt uh, goes underneath the hammock and prevents air drafts from uh, giving you what is colloquially called cold butt syndrome. Uh, I'm looking forward to using this. It is synthetic, um, and so I'm not as worried about it getting wet. That's why it's not in a special dry bag. It's just in the Topeak bag. Um, on the top here, I have my rain jacket, just in case of inclement weather. Um, and that's held in with another one of these Velcro straps. They're very, very handy. In the rear pocket here, I have uh, my Nalgene fuel bottle. And this is filled with uh, denatured alcohol uh, for the alcohol stove. And clipped to the back of that is my rear light. Aha. This rear light uh, pulses nicely, lets people know that I'm there. Uh, not as important once I'm on the Katy Trail, but since I will be riding on some of the city streets in St. Louis to get to the Katy Trail, um, I wanted to be absolutely sure that I was safe. So I'll be running that light, I'll be running the headlight at the same time. Okay, let's move perspective again. Okay, now for the center of the Topeak trunk bag here. In here I have... Ooh, being attacked by mosquitoes. In here I have the wilderness wipes. Um, everywhere I'll be staying has showers along the way. I'm not going to be roughing it as much as I 
could be, but I feel like a shower at the end of a hard days of bike riding is a very helpful thing. However, if I'm going out to lunch somewhere and I don't want to be totally stinky, I've got these uh, wilderness wipes ready to just do a little bit of a quick pat down. This here is my bowl. Um, extends out and covers the top of the cook kit nicely. Uh, underneath that is my MSR um, cleaning uh, device. This lets me scrape out of the pot or the bowl or, you know, make sure that I get um, dishes cleaned up fairly well. That's the dish kit. First aid kit. I've got some ibuprofen in here, um, a compass, uh, which isn't really first aid, but it's helpful if I get lost and all of my GPS units fall down. I've got this available to, to use that way. All that stuff. Since I am traveling by myself, I'm taking probably a more complete first aid kit than I need. Really don't want anything to go wrong. Underneath the first aid kit, I've got a uh, little container of waterproof matches just in case I need to start a fire. Um, those are there. I've also got a lighter in here. These are my trash bags. I will fill them with trash as time goes on. For now, they're just empty Ziplocs. Then I've got my cook kit, which is this wonderful uh, soloist kit. I think it's called the soloist from MSR. Uh, it has a little sink bag that's water uh, waterproof, so you can actually fill this with water and clean with it at the end of your cooking. Then all of this lid uh, it fits on all of the things that are in there. It's got a bowl, pan, or a pot, and then in there is my stove and the lighter wrapped in with the stove. Uh, it is um, an alcohol burner, which uh, I'm hoping to be able to find alcohol along the way. I'm only able to take about a liter of it, as you saw. Um, now, that liter should do for about four days, but since the trip I'm expecting to be five, I will need a resupply somewhere, um, possibly in Sedalia uh, when I get there, but we shall see. Let me get this back into its kit. I wish this fit weren't so tight. Even, you know, there we go. It's a great little kit, except for not fitting in there very well. And then this uh, dry bag is the, uh, the food bag. I've got uh, all sorts of different food, some mountain house meals, um, freeze dried food. I've got some um, tuna and chicken and peanut butter. Uh, and there is a pack of uh, tortillas that I'm bringing. So I've got uh, peanut butter and almond butter and all sorts of different things to uh, put in the tortillas for breakfast. My plan for food is to have uh, cold breakfast, so um, peanut butter and maybe something else on a tortilla in the morning to get me started. Um, and then for lunch, I'll stop along the way. Uh, it's nice to have a warm meal somewhere along the trip, but I don't have to cook. And then at the end of the day, have a freeze dried thing that just needs water to reheat that'll let me get set up in camp uh, from there. Oh, hey, these need to go back into. Okay, now for the, the last bag, as I mentioned here. This uh, side of the pannier uh, has most of the things you'd expect it to have. First of all, a um, rain cover for the Topeak bag, the panniers and the trunk bag. This just resides in here in case it starts raining. I can pull it out, cover everything. It straps down underneath it and keeps everything dry. Uh, then I've got a warm layer and my extra pair of socks. This is my riding, uh, other pair of riding socks. They're darn tough as well. That's the brand name. I'm not claiming um, anything else from them. Uh, and this is another Mountain Warehouse shirt. It's a lot thicker material and should help keep me warm on cool days, which is, you know, expected some of the trip as well. Then after that, I have the tarp. Um, this goes over where the hammock will go, and I've got it wrapped in a really falling apart snakeskin um, that I made out of a loofah. The homemade snakeskin didn't work as well as I'd hoped, but it does help keep it together a little bit, and so that's why I've retained it in here even though it is falling apart. Okay, that is tarp. Ah, this is my pillow uh, from Sierra Madre. Uh, it's just an inflatable pillow. Um, probably not the next thing that I need, but no, just came up next. Then I've got my hammock straps, uh, which connect to either tree. Um, 
the stakes and lines that I'd need to guy out the tarp. And lastly, at the bottom of this is the hammock itself in its um, stuff sack. And this, this hammock, uh, I've modified a little bit. I've added a ridge line to it. It does have a bug net on it to keep me bug free at night. Uh, and I've of course added the underquilt straps um, as well, so I can have an underqu underquilt with it. Put everything back here. So yeah, that's everything I'm bringing. I've got the hammock for shelter, the uh, phone for navigation, as well as an extra map that I picked up from the Adventure Cycling Association. Now, it just so happens that the Katy Trail presents uh, a good section of the uh, Lewis and Clark Trail that the Adventure Cycling Association has put together. And this is, can you believe it, a physical map, um, something to use to find your way. So this map here uh, is the overview of the entire section of the Adventure Cycling Association trip. I will not be riding from Illinois to Nebraska, but it's nice to know that I could with this map if I so chose. Um, the overview isn't as useful as these tiny little inserts, which will take me most of the way along the Katy Trail. Now, to answer the question before it becomes inevitably obvious to everyone, I will not be riding the Katy Trail from one end to the other end completely. The Katy Trail runs officially from uh, Machins or Machins, I'm still not entirely sure which pronunciation is correct, uh, Missouri to Clinton, Missouri at the other end. I, however, when I get to Windsor, Missouri, I'm going to take a uh, detour and take the Rock Island Trail up to uh, Pleasant Hill where that trail ends uh, and then ride on the roads to get to visit some good friends that live in Lee's Summit, not too far from there. I'm excited to, to take the trail, even though I'm not taking the Kitty Trail from one end to the other, I am certainly going to be riding about the same distance, about 240, 250 miles uh, of the trail, and it will take me five days or so to do it. Uh, I'm looking forward to this trip, and I hope that you'll come back and check out the video of the trip, uh, video or videos, I'm still not sure how that's going to all come together. Don't forget to like and subscribe, uh, and hit that little bell button if you want the notification of when new videos go up on the channel. I'm fairly irregular posting. I don't have a set schedule or set time for it, so that bell can really help you know, hey, there's a new video uh, if you want to see the next adventures, whatever those happen to be in Keppel's vlog. So glad uh, you've come with me on this gear, gear tour today. If you've got any questions, please leave me a comment. I'd be happy to answer anything um, you'd like to know. Take care. Bye-bye. First of all, let's not hit the camera against the bike as I take by. Um, and then underneath that uh, is this brand new to me uh, enlightened equipment quilt. I believe it's enlightened equipment. Oh no, no, it's hammock gear. Excuse me, it's a hammock gear uh, quilt. Um, let's get this stuff back away, shall we? back up, clipped, ready to go back. Just now rolled back up, clipped. Now next up, good job, me. All right, we're almost to the end of the time here. Ooh, this wasn't zipped up. Whistle and um, some uh, bug wipes that prevent bugs from doing what they're trying to do right now, which is land on me. First of all, it's a rain cover for the Topeak bag. This will cover the entire pannier set. I'm not sure if you can see it from there, but this side is uh, the overview of the entire first section. I will not be riding from Illinois through Kansas to the Dakotas. Um, Nebraska, sorry. <laughs> Let me try that again.